The average median bank account in the US is $5,300. 56% of Americans can't afford a $1,000 emergency, and the 44% of Americans who can't afford the emergency from their savings is the highest it's been in eight years, according to Bankrate. And basically, the majority of Americans can't afford an emergency, and if you've been watching the news or any personal finance YouTube channels, you know that a recession is right around the corner, or that's what their headline would tell you but they could be right because can we really trust Jerome Powell to land this inflation plane so much is up in the air and so I figured that I might as well share some tips to help you keep your life the same while saving some money well mostly the same these tips aren't going to be to just spend less money it's going to be the exact opposite honestly these are strategies I use to live off 76 percent of my income and I work in a school so I don't make a whole lot of money because I know people that say that they live off 5% on income, but they're making a million dollars. So yes, I could live off $50,000 per year because that's what I was doing. But with these tips, I will show you how to go out to eat, travel, buy a house, and still save money. And if you're looking to get the table stuff, like just spend less money or wait until the next day, you can stick around until the end because I go over that kind of science about how shopping can be like taking a drug, but that's the boring stuff and so I save that till the end but that is enough of this let's dive into the video and today we will be using footage for my trip to a split Croatia tip number one live for free so it is estimated that the average American spends between 33 to 50 percent of their income on housing so being able to wipe that all away would be huge here are a couple ways to do that and step number one would be to buy a multi-family home this could be a duplex triplex or quadruplex and you live in one of the units and rent out the other units and hopefully the rent from all the other units will cover your costs or will at least reduce them this is something that i did where i bought a four unit i lived in one of the units and the three units covered the mortgage the water and all my other expenses and once i moved out of that unit i was able to cash flow a thousand dollars and if you want to see more about this I have it linked up above and down below. Way number two is to get a roommate, whether you rent out a place or you buy a home. You can then find roommates to rent out a room, which can lower your expenses, whether that's with the mortgage, the utilities, the water bills. Ways to find a roommate would be to ask a friend, your family, your coworkers. I would probably stay away from Craigslist. It doesn't have to be a permanent thing either. You can do it for a year or two and then eventually move on from there. Your third option is to rent out your room on Airbnb. This can be something where you rent out a room if you have multiple rooms in your house or in your apartment. But let's say that you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend and you can stay with them whenever someone is wanting to rent out your place. You could also get the added cleaning fee, which means you would have someone come to clean your place, which is not a bad option either. Tip number two is to travel for free. Credit card companies give people bonuses just for signing up and people use them to travel the world like I have and you can as well. You typically get these bonuses by meeting the minimum spend and then once you met that you can redeem those points, get the free travel and then move on to the next card. Now when it comes to doing this there are some very important rules because these businesses are multi-billion dollar businesses for a reason so make sure that you you will follow these rules and never do this if you're not able to pay off the balance because you shouldn't be paying any interest because if you're having to pay the interest are you really getting free travel you do not want to do this if you're about to buy a house a car or get a loan and if you want to see how I got buy one get one free flights on Southwest you can can click the link up above and down below. Tip number three is eating at restaurants. So instead of going out to eat, you can typically go to the grocery store and get the same kind of products just for way cheaper. But I do have a tip coming up, which will allow you to go out to eat for free. But if you are gonna go to the grocery store, then make sure that you shop on Wednesdays. Why Wednesdays, you may ask. Many grocery stores launch their sales midweeks on Wednesdays. So you'll be the first one to get all of the rewards and coupons, and then you even see still will sometimes have access to last week's sale. Best of all, you can maximize your savings without having to deal with all the crowds on the weekends. Let's say that you still want to go out to eat and I totally get that. I'm the same way. 
I do have a video linked up above and down below, which will go over how you can be paid to go to restaurants. Typically when I go, I'm able to spend up to $70 and then I'm paid $10 on top of that for going out to eat. I do have to write a little report and take a couple pictures, but that's super easy. Tip number four, find free events. Depending on where you live, most places do have free events, whether this is free classes on the weekends, free stargazing, free hiking groups, free concerts in the park, free art shows. You shouldn't have to stay home to save money. So try to check out whether there's any free activities in your area. Yes, with sticking only to free stuff, you won't be able to experience everything, like this Harry Styles concert, but that's why there is the Coachella live stream. Tip number five is to compare your auto and home insurance. Typically with my coverages, they like to raise it a couple dollars every six months to a year, even though I'm not getting into any kind of accidents. My car is actually getting older, but I will typically like to check around to see whether I can keep the same coverage while getting a cheaper rate, because if I'm able to save $10 a month, that could be $100 a year, which is pretty nice. Tip number six is to get a better mobile phone plan. Pretty similar to the last recommendation is to make sure that you have the right phone plan for you. Me personally, I don't have the unlimited data plan because I'm usually either at home or I'm at work and both spots have a Wi-Fi. So I just hop on the Wi-Fi and even most restaurants or even places like Home Depot have Wi-Fi. So now I do have some data on my phone plan, but it's not that limited because I cost more and I don't need it. Worst case, I have a heavy data month, which will cost me $15, but that's still cheaper than paying for every month when I don't actually use it. Tip number seven is is to check for free solar. So I recently moved houses and this is the new house. With that move, I haven't set up my office yet, which is why I'm in the backyard. But with the house we purchased, they had an agreement with the energy company. They use our roof for solar panels, which they then give us a credit for $30, which isn't a whole lot, but that could be $360. This is something which I never heard of. You may want to check to see whether your area has a similar option. Now for the boring and obvious tips. Tip number one is to not buy it and to wait until the next day to see whether you still want it. This one really cuts down on the impulse purchases and make sure that you actually want to buy the thing that you're going to spend your hard earned money on. This one also starts to get really interesting the deeper you dive. Studies have shown that while you are shopping, you can get the head of dopamine, which increases your well being and your happiness, similar to a drug. But when you dive in even deeper, the dopamine hit comes from the anticipation of the product and not actually buying the product, which is kind of weird. So from that, we can determine that you won't get any kind of happiness from actually buying it. So you might as well just do some window shopping and move about your day. Tip number two is let's say that you waited a day and now you're like, okay, I'm gonna buy this product, but let's think, would I rather have the cost of the product or would I rather have the product? Let's say that I want to get a new TV and that TV is gonna cost me $500. Would I rather have the TV or would I rather have the $500? Because that's essentially the decision you're making. No one's gonna give you that $500, but you will need to lose that money. And nowadays with using credit cards and with just seeing the numbers on the screen, it no longer feels like real money. It's more like a monopoly money at this point. Point. Tip number three is to make coffee at home. 64% of Americans drink coffee and of them, the average spend on coffee per year is over $1,000. Now, if you were to take that $1,000 and save $100 per month on coffee over the course of 30 years with the average interest rate of 8% from the stock market, you could end up having almost $150,000. This is an extreme example and you can still get coffee, but you may want to reduce just how often you're going and maybe go just once a week or something. So hopefully you found this video helpful and have learned some tips on how to save some money without really impacting your life all that much. And if you know someone that could benefit from this information, then consider sharing this with them. And if you want to help me grow the channel, then tap that like button. And if you want to be around for when I post my next video, do not forget to subscribe, but I will see you guys next time.